It's been a while, so let's play some more Netrunner. Yes, Netrunner, the best game that you can play right now on tabletop with cards. All right, so I made this deck called the HB Slow Advance deck. I was thinking, I'm going to do the exact opposite of what everyone else is doing, right? That should work. That should surprise the hell out of people. Uh, and some people were interested in this deck, but I didn't post a deck list. Well, the list for the deck I'm playing right there is, you will find it in the uh, description of this video. Uh, so I'm actually going to give you a super bonus here. Two different games playing the HB Slow Advance deck. All right. Uh, so the whole idea of the HB Slow Advance deck uh, is that instead of scoring agendas out of your hand with biotic labor, you don't need no biotic labor. You don't need no trick of light. You don't need no sand sand, right? All you do is install the agendas on the table like you're supposed to, the default way of doing things, and you advance. And it's like, come on, runner. I dare you to run this. It's advanced twice. You know how many traps I got in here? What are you going to do? All right? And it really punishes people who don't have infiltration. Uh, and it also punishes people who don't run HQ to see what you're holding or, you know, trash your traps and, and whatnot. You know, there's one server. It's got an advanced card in it. What are they going to do about it? Um, you know, and if they ignore the remotes completely and just hit centrals, well, it punishes them even harder. Uh, so let's see what happens when I slow advance. Okay, so for the slow advance, at least for the one I made, uh, I went with the default uh, HB identity. I thought of trying to use some of the other ones, maybe use um, custom biotics and uh, get more traps uh, in there, you know, with the extra influence. But you can't include Jinteki cards, so that sort of ruins that. Uh, the one where you have more cards in your hand, that could actually work uh, well with uh, this archetype. Because, you know, basically you just draw so many cards, you can, you know, who knows what you're laying down, right? Um, next, next, maybe can help because you can get your remote working earlier. Uh, but not until there's, you know, more next ice. And Stronger Together could also work. Uh, because, you know, you'll basically cost the runner a whole bunch every time they check those remotes. Uh, because all the eight bioroids are, are really strong. Uh, but you might have to include some cards to deal with E3 uh, if you play that many Bioroids. So here we go. Pretty standard play. Install, install. Install the remote right away. Getting the extra credit because I installed at least one card this turn. Playing against Gabe here. Using that new alternate art Gabe. He's face checking right away. It's a Matrix Analyzer. Which I will use to advance. Matrix Analyzer is key in the slow advance deck. You can scare the crap out of people. Uh, it's not a card people expect. It only costs one to res. Uh, and you just start advancing stuff. So they might run the unadvanced card, and you advance it on the way in. And if they ignore those remotes and just run the centrals, you just get more advancements uh, on whatever card you've got installed. So, of course, he ran HQ like a common criminal that he is uh, and took the agenda out of my hand. Only one point. Not too bad. Uh, you know, that's just going to happen. Uh, but, yeah, Matrix Analyzer, not only uh, do you get that advancement, which is key for the slow advance deck, but that trace for a tag, that can really drain people early on. And look at this ultra-lucky draw I got here. Two Matrix Analyzers. One R&D, one HQ. You know, they might they might be playing a tag me deck. It, it's entirely possible. Uh, yeah, but they're sitting there real worried about who knows what kind of tag punishment is coming down the line. When they see this out of HB, they don't know what to think. Of course, if they're smart, they'll realize, wait a minute. You've probably spent six influence on Matrix Analyzers. You probably don't have... <laughs> you, almost, you do not have enough for Scorched Earths in there. Uh, influence wise so are you playing closed accounts are you you know who is there a dedicated response team it's, it's possible you know what what could be going on here and you know some runners don't want to get tagged in which case matrix analyzer is just even better if they got resources they want to protect right katie jones is really popular 
People have resources these days. Doesn't hurt to tag people, even if you're not carrying uh, any tag punishment around with you. Okay, so... I iced up that remote now. He's a little scared to run it. I got two free advancements on it. I got some money. Yeah, that is, you know, I think that's the real reason I chose, even though the other HB identities are valid for this uh, archetype of Corp deck, uh, I decided to go with the regular one because the economy is key, right? You need to have enough credits to res the ice, uh, otherwise there's no point in making someone run a remote if you can't res the ice on it. And two, you need credits to advance, right? They hit a matrix analyzer and you don't have any money. Well, what was the point of that? Nothing. You just got to get as much money as you can. <laughs> Something else, it's just really good to have a trace on HQ against a criminal, uh, regardless of what kind of uh, criminal they are. Because you know the account siphon's coming. You don't care about the tag, you just care about dumping all your money so they can't account siphon very well. So there, another key card in the slow advance deck is Simone Diego, right? You're going to use most of your economy for advancing, so all your actual credits can be used for resing ice. Mm -hmm. So by now, they're looking at that, and they're thinking, well, you've spent six influence on Matrix Analyzer and six on Simone. <laughs> what are the other three influence on? Yeah, Simone just lets you advance like crazy without even caring. And the and the, the best part is, all right? Oh, he matrix analyzed. Here we go. Even more advancements. See now, look at this. He hasn't infiltrated it. He hasn't played a satellite uplink. He doesn't know what that is. That's a mandatory upgrades. Oh snap! Right? If that's Project Ares, oh snap! Right? He, he can't can't let that slide. I mean, you know, an HV has a card with too many advancements on it. That could really hurt you really badly. But you can't run it. What if you run it? It could just be like Thomas Haas. Okay, sure, that doesn't hurt you if it's Thomas Haas that badly. You won't lose the game, but you will, uh, you know, you'll basically spend a bunch, um, you know, uh, getting through all that ice for no reason. So now I make a mistake here, uh, which I'll tell you about in a second. I'm icing up my archives because I know the sneak door is coming. I take a credit. And I advance. Oh no, I got the credit for installing the ice on archives. And then I advance twice with Simone. That's what I did. That shows you the, how powerful the you know basic HB still is. So he did. He installed this sneak door right after I installed an ice. Super lucky on that. Seeing the sneak door coming. I really can't let him see what's in my hand because I'm slow advancing. Which means, yes, agendas, traps, they're entering your hand and waiting for their turn uh, in the big server. You know, Simone can only work on one thing at a time. She's pretty unique. And you can't, you know, you can't chicken out, right? I mean, if that's a June bug there, if that's a, you know, a trap, a secretary, you just keep advancing, right? You don't, you can't, uh, get to keep the bluff going. Right? If you stop advancing it, it's basically like giving up. Just keep going. You have Simone. It doesn't cost you anything. Just keep it going as long as you can. See, he's a little starved for money over there, running through those Matrix Analyzers uh, without... You know, with just, what, an Armitage and no Icebreakers? And now a Ninja, that's really not economical. That costs four to get through a Matrix Analyzer. 
So he's going to run archives. I don't have enough to res that. So I'm going to spend a credit. Res and use Thomas Haas. Oh, yes. Get a zillion dollars. Oh, baby. Cha ching See, you know, the mistake I made earlier was that when he I used my last credit on a matrix analyzer, and that was a big mistake because he could have run the remote and I would have had zero credits to activate a trap, zero credits to res Thomas Haas, right? I guess it was also his mistake. He could have, as soon as I spent my last credit, he could have run that remote safely. Uh, so always keep one credit on the table no matter what. Uh, during the if the runner has any clicks left if they run a matrix analyzer on their last click and they don't have a doppelganger or You know something like that then it's like okay You can spend your last credit on your matrix analyzer, but otherwise if you have an advanced card on the table Do not because you need that last credit to activate, you know, Junebug or Haas. So Yeah, Thomas Haas is not an economy card. Well, he is if you have matrix analyzer in Simone Diego Money. I went from z one, two to eighteen, <laughs> uh, and there was a viper over there. He's but his sneak door went. You know, he went through the viper, uh, and he grabbed a mandatory upgrades out of my hand that was waiting for its turn. Install. Get a credit for that. Like I need it anymore. Install on the HQ because you know now that I have all this money. Uh, Account siphon is possible. And take another credit. Well, he took all the cards that I could advance, uh, I think. So Simone doesn't have any work to do right now. The trick is to avoid any sort of psychology, right? You just have to... Oh, a chimera. Yeah, I can afford to res that a whole bunch now. You can't have any psychology as to what you install in advance. You just have to sort of take whatever you drew. You know, I like to go by the order I drew it in. And just whatever I drew first, that's what I'm going to install in advance. That way there's no way the runner can, you know, sort of outthink you and be like, ah, oh, I know that's a trap based on, you know, because the game situation would suggest that you would put a trap there right now because I can get in. Well, it's like, no, it's just whatever I drew. You know, I'll sneak an agenda by you that you could have gotten. You know? I'll put in a trap, you know, uh, obviously, though, that's one thing you don't want to do, is if you are 100% sure, or extremely sure, the runner either A, is not going to run remotes at all, uh, is one of the centrals only players, or B, they are, uh, they absolutely cannot get in to that remote server, then yeah, you would push an agenda ahead <laughs> in uh, Simone's uh, work queue. See, this is the annoying part, is when they run through the Matrix Analyzer and you don't have something on the table to advance. It's Melange. I don't know why I did the Melange there. Uh, it's not like I didn't have any money. <laughs> but it's it's nice to pressure the runner. Why aren't I derezzing my chim Chimera? No, oh, there I go. Derez that. It's not supposed to be that. But yeah, it's just, you know, it's nice to pressure the runner there. It's like, yeah. You have to use an inside job in this melange. Otherwise, what are you going to do for the rest of the game? Just let me have a zillion dollars? Even an account siphon now would be like... I wouldn't even bat an eyelash at that. And I'm HB. I can afford to res just a Janus now. Do I have one? Did I just put it on HQ? No, I don't have one. I didn't put it on HQ. <laughs> okay, so he's he's really desperate for money here. Those matrix analyzers really taxed him. You know, he, he wants to run and be aggressive. He can't just let me keep drawing safely. Um, but you know, it's it's not an ice he's prepared to deal with. You really need you need a mimic to get through those economically, which people are playing. You can also parasite them away, which would be kind of annoying. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to draw some cards here. Oh, I got one that I can advance. 
I install it, which gets me a credit. And I'm going to advance it twice. I found some more work for Simone to do. I was going to keep drawing to find something for her to do. Uh, you know, research and development. You know, was there any new projects coming up she could deal with? But I found one right away. So rather than look for more, right? I'll just start working on it immediately, pressure the runner, and it worked. He ran the remote. I got an enigma there, losing a click. Tian's like, yeah, if you could just inside job, whatever. Well, he doesn't know what that is. <laughs> D dare he run that? Dare he run R&D or HQ? If he does that, I get to advance even more. Right? If you think about it, what if that's a mandatory upgrades? Right? It's at two. So it's going to take me two more turns to score it. If he runs R&D even once right now, or HQ, and goes to the Matrix Analyzer, I can advance it, which means I'm going to score that mandatory upgrades a whole turn earlier, giving him a whole... You basically have zero chance uh, to go in there and get it. So he ran the Enigma, lost a click from the Enigma, Special order the Gordian Blade and installed the Gordian Blade. That's all four clicks. Enigma. And now he can't run again. Right? That's going to sit there now. Um, oh, he didn't install the Gordian Blade. So he has one click left. But see, if he installs the Gordian Blade, he cannot run the Enigma this turn. Oh, so he drew a card rather than install the Gordian Blade. Now it's my turn. Put another ice in R&D. And advance twice. Hmm? See? I know, he knows I know, that he just got a Gordian Blade with a special order. So, if that's an agenda, why? and I could score it, why wouldn't I? Right? And if it is an, why, if it is an agenda, why would I spend my clicks advancing it? When, you know, why wouldn't I maybe... Why did I install the ice in R&D? I could have installed the ice to protect it. Right? It, it makes no sense. Right? So, it's, you just keep advancing. You just have the balls to keep advancing, no matter what. Right, you do the same thing no matter what project Simone is working on. So it's like, he knows I know he can get in there. So obviously it should be a trap. But no, the poison's in the other cup. Maybe I'm just trying to scare him into thinking it's a trap. So that I can get my agenda through without having to put another ice there. Is he too scared to run it? HV slow advance. Just put it in advance and just let the game go by. See what happens. I'm losing three to nothing. He's going for it. He spent the money in his Gordian Blade. He's doing it. Game over. Project Junebug happened to draw it. That is the beauty of the HP Slow Advance. Okay, so let's be honest with ourselves, right? That was sort of a rare edition of the HP Slow Advance where you get a trap, it just works perfectly right away, and the game ends immediately. Most of the time, if you're slow advancing, the game is going to go long. You put something on the table, you advance it. The runner thinks a lot about whether to run it or not, right? They're sitting there on their turn thinking a lot. You're slowly install, advance, advance, install, advance, advance. It slows the game down. When you draw more cards, you speed the game up, right? By getting the agendas out into the table faster. The faster the agendas enter, you know, HQ or get to the top of R&D, the faster the corp draws cards, the faster the game will go. The slower the corp draws, right? The slower the game will go. So if you just go install, advance, 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 advance. You're only drawing one card per turn. It's, it's pretty much as slow as the game can be. Um, and the additional thinking time for the runner. So you have to think about that strategically. If you want to play this in a tournament, I don't know if I'd recommend it. You pretty much don't want to go to time in a tournament. To win a tournament, you're going to need to get two points. Uh, you know, you're going to need to get you know four points in a match. Two points both times. If a slow advanced deck will go to time, or if you play it first, will force your runner uh, to go to time. Uh, you know, if the if the rounds are short, so that might just cause. Even if your HP slow advance is so good that it wins, um, you might end up going to time uh, and losing points uh, due to that and losing the tournament. So, don't know if it's tournament worthy due to the speed issue. 
but yeah, as you can see, sometimes it goes quickly. Let's watch a much more interesting game where it goes slowly. So the shuffle is really important. Uh, you know, you need to get ice early, and you need to start getting traps and agendas uh, to advance. If you don't have anything to advance, things get pretty bad. Uh, and I think what you need to do is power draw to find something to advance, especially if the runner is uh, has control of R&D. You know, you can by power drawing, you can either get some ice to defend it, or uh, get something to advance and distract them. But yeah, a bad draw can really ruin this deck. This is actually the second game <laughs> I've played against this opponent on this night. In the first one, I just got a bad draw. The only ice I had was a Chimera. I had to put on an HQ. I couldn't res it <laughs> every turn because it's a Chimera. That's like the worst place for a Chimera to be. And... Um, yeah, it, uh, it just took all these agendas out of my hand before I could uh, start. You know, I put one down and advanced it and scored it, but couldn't get any others uh, before they were all stolen. So, really important to shuffle properly. Especially with the slow advance deck. You know, some other decks can, can deal with a bad draw. All right, this one can't. Okay, here we go. Choo -choo. Pretty typical Kate versus the slow advance. Got a decent draw. Install, install. Get a credit for installing. And install. Get those remotes working early. See, sometimes you have a feeling like you, you know, if you have things to install, you sort of want to hold off. It's like, oh, I'll install it next turn and get another credit. But it's like, no, you, you got to push the runner. It's an Adonis campaign. You trashing it? Oh, yes, he's letting me keep it. He'll wait for me to res it. See, that's a typical thing with Adonis campaign. When you res it, it costs you a credit the turn you res it. So that's the turn the runner wants to trash it. Run HQ, I did not res. It's another Adonis campaign, Sexy Mans. Trash that one. He doesn't want to let me have two on the table. Oh, install. Gaining a credit and take two more credits. Why didn't I res the Adonis campaign? I didn't have enough money to res the Adonis campaign, or I would have resed it. He run, okay. His turn, not very exciting. My turn. Adonis Campaign! So, you know, Adonis Campaign is a little weird in the deck because you can't advance it. But it does the same job of while you're drawing cards, while you're setting up to advance something, you get your economy going. Uh, but more importantly, uh, it pressures the runner to run the remote, which costs them, right? And you don't lose anything. Basically, if you, if the runner runs, you want the runner to run the remote. You pay, you put ice out there, you res it, and the runner runs through that ice. It costs them resources. You want to drag the runner back and forth across the ice that you resed in front of the remote uh, as many times as you can. And Adonis campaign uh, can do that. You know, if they're wizard, it hurts them a little bit less. I think that's a mistake a lot of people make, is they'll have like a deck, an Awayland deck. They'll put archers in. They'll spend a whole agenda point to res an archer. Right? But then the archer's sitting on the remote, and they never install anything in the remote except when it's agendas. So the runner runs, and they spend a bunch of resources to run through the archer, but then they just grab the agenda. So it was totally worth whatever resources they had to spend. If you put things behind the archer that aren't agendas... Even if they don't hurt the runner, it hurts them because they just had to spend their archer, you know, destroying resources 
you know, you drag them back and forth across that archer as many times as you can, right, to make them spend uh, all those resources on it. Okay. So getting big money from ye old Adonis campaign, selling sexy robots, and freaking the runner out. My draw didn't have the cards I wanted, so I decided to go for this play. This play didn't work. <laughs> well, it sort of worked. <laughs> Install three new servers with three new cards in it. He runs the first one. It's Thomas Haas. He trashes it. Okay, so I basically spent a click to install, which cost the runner credits, and a melange. He trashes that too. So I basically, you know, installed three things, got a credit for installing, and the runner had to spend a bunch of credits to trash all of it. Oh, he got my two one-pointers. So it's two to nothing. He's got a Gordian Blade, and he's hitting up R&D. Okay, drew an ice, putting it down at R and D. Non-mandatory draw, non-mandatory draw. See, I'm, I've got nothing to advance. I got nothing to work on here. I need to, you know, start up that remote that actually has ice on it. Um, you know, and actually has advanceable cards in it. I've got all this money for my Adonis campaign. Well, since the this is the one thing, right? Is a shaper loves time to build their rig. Well, slow advance gives them plenty of time, and that could be pretty dangerous. Giving them all that time. Okay. I'm done selling those Bioroid dudes. Let's do something else. How about install, gaining a credit? Install, advance. All right. Look how fast that happens, right? One turn, I'm just sitting there, just taking money from an Adonis campaign. Next turn, the slow advance has begun. I'm happy to see him throw away that mimic. Um, maybe it means he has another one, uh, but that means my matrix analyzers are going to be much more annoying. Let's run an HQ. It's a roto turret. Oh, oh! Can he do anything about it? Oh, he's clone chipping the mimic. Okay, I make him spend his clone chip. I think he only broke the trash program subroutine of the roto turret. I don't think he broke the end the run subroutine because he did not have enough credits to do that. Here we go. Slow advance. <laughs> advance, advance. Good pro context, pro context, run HQ. Another data suckers. That's all his memory right now. So here's where I'm going to make a mistake. Not a big mistake, but a mistake. 
Basically, I got nervous, which is what you can't do in the slow advance deck. Right? I do Project Ares. Oh, yes. You should have run that. Uh, and I had seven counters on it, which means he has to trash three cards of his choice. But he chooses the Sacrificial Construct as one of the cards. Uses the Sacrificial Construct to save the Gordian Blade, which he chooses as another card, and then loses... So he only lost a Data Sucker, right? The question is, would he have run that remote on the next turn? The answer is probably not. He probably wasn't running that remote on the next turn. I should have gone one more turn uh, on the Project Ares. If I had done so, I would have trashed three more cards. His whole rig would have been hosed. That would have been amazing. Right? But I got a little nervous with it. You can't be nervous with it. I saw the Sacrificial Construct on the table. I knew I wasn't doing that much damage with it. You just, you just gotta keep advancing. Right? He'll think it's Thomas Haas. He'll think who knows what. Um, just keep going for it. Slow advance until it has enough to really, you know, ruin them. But it's still pretty awesome. Uh, but basically, it was trash a data sucker and get a bad publicity. And that's sort of a... <laughs> it's not much of a trade, right? I mean... What does Data Sucker do? It gives you, you know, helps make runs cheaper by decreasing strength of ice. What does a bad publicity do? It makes runs cheaper. So he, it's like, okay, yeah, he'll get rid of a Data Sucker and take a bad pub. That, that wasn't, you know, and I guess he lost his Sacrificial Construct too. But I really needed more counters on the Ares. I probably could have had them if I wanted to. Okay, there we go. Wall O Static. Bonk. Bonk. You ain't getting in. Where's your corroder at? I don't see it in your hand. Why don't you run HQ? You got a mimic. He's gonna run the remote because I just put a new card in there. And I got a bastion, so also bonk. <laughs> you ain't getting in there either. And I've still got money left. The power of Hasbaroid. Engineering the future. Okay, so. Doesn't have a corroder, but he's got a parasite. All right, well, gonna res my Adonis campaign, mandatory draw. Install the cards in the order you get them. Also, since I'm low on money, install the Adonis campaign. Because <laughs> you spent all my money, res me eyes. So here we go, another upgrade. So if it's if it's no surprise, right? The upgrades in the deck are Simone uh, and Ash, right? Great dynamic duo, those two. Simone also, I think, is going out with Thomas Haas. But you know, you can't have Thomas Haas and also sixty man robots at the same time. Kind of a lucky draw if you think about it. I think that we've seen all three Adonis campaigns. Runs HQ for two. Doesn't see anything exciting. He's parasiting my wall of static to death. He mostly ran HQ to get that data sucker token. Because that will hasten the death of my wall of static uh, by an entire turn. And an R&D interface, yep, he's he's looking to go dig R&D before I can slow advance things, right? He thinks, ah, I have nothing to be scared of uh, from his advanced remotes if I run R&D and trash all the traps and take all the agendas. So I'm going to keep R&D safe somehow. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of the wall of static because I know it's going down next turn anyway. 
right? Because he has a data sucker token. It's going to get one at the start of his turn. He runs it. Boom, it's dead. I can't afford to clear virus counters right now. I'll just install two motherfucking ice. You ain't going to R&D now. All right, well, he still wants his data suckers, and he figures he'll look at HQ because I did draw some new cards he hasn't seen yet. And I just put, I just also played ice which means there's less ice in my hand, there's other cards that aren't ice in my hand, or at least most likely. Also, if he's seen ice in my hand, and he can run HQ and maybe figure out if the ice on the table are or are not the ice he's seen. Matrix Analyzer, yes! He has resources, pro contacts, so he doesn't want to tag. So that will annoy him, even though I have nothing to advance right now. And a Bastion, let's see a Parasite that. Much bigger. A whole one strength bigger than the wall of static that I already got rid of. And the matrix analyzer costs them one credit every time. Pretty good. Donna's campaign happens. Gonna block up HQ. Why am I blocking up HQ? Mostly to keep him from loading up on these stupid data sucker counters. <laughs> Also, I kind of want to get my money up. Well, it won't matter. I can't I can't get the Matrix Analyzer Trace going on as long as he has a Mimic. But if he ever decides he just wants to let it happen, um, you know, I really want to tag him now to get that Katie Jones out of there. All right, he's going to run HQ, make me res that. It's another Matrix Analyzer. So now it costs him three, effectively, to run HQ. It's a whole turn worth of Katie Jones just to get into HQ once. That's a good deal. Uh, well, without getting tagged or trashing a program. <laughs> well, he does have the bad pub I gave him. Man, if only I had advanced that Project Ares more. He wouldn't have a mimic right, you know. What would he have trashed? He didn't have much of a rig back then. It would have been the other data sucker, the mimic, the Gordian blade, or the pro contacts. Only one of those would have been kept. <laughs> oh, he's parasiting the Bastion now. He really wants to hit R&D. Shapers do what shapers do. Okay. We're done with the Donis campaign. I think it's time to advance something. Right? Simone, get to work. That's what this deck is all about. The thing about Simone that can sometimes be upsetting is that you pay four to res her, and then she advances twice, and that's all you can do. So if they trash her on the turn you res her, right, then you lose money. If they trash her the turn after that, you break even, right, which is okay. Well, you actually do better than break even because the runner spent uh, to trash her, so you're still up. Uh, yeah, she is really good, but um, yeah, the third time you use Simone to advance twice, that's when she pays off. Big. Real big. See, and now that I have an advanceable card on the table, right? which is what you really want. You just want to have an advanceable card always on the table as much as possible. Uh, now, running R&D, running HQ, okay, he can get in, okay, he can data sucker the Bastion. I'm going to advance that card with my Matrix Analyzers. If he lets me even have one advancement on that card right now, and it is a mandatory upgrade, then it's a whole turn earlier that I can score it. So he's running archives. Ichi 1.0. Oh, 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 oh. Such a nasty ice. I've been working on ice placement. I think that's a big part of the Corp game, is putting the right ice in the right place. And I've decided you always want to put a, a nasty program trashing ice on archives. Right? That's the most important thing. Because 
If someone's running archives, usually it's because they have a program, like a data sucker or a sneak door. You know, only the only other people who run archives are people who are milling you, like noise. And even they probably have a program while they're running archives. And if they lose that program, the whole point of running archives is is defeated. So you want to put a grim or an ichi or you know something that just trashes ice and lets them through because right on the archives um really screw over whoever's running there right that was really expensive and annoying for him to deal with um and of course he was going to fill up his data suckers right every every card in there is face up you know a, a program trashing ice on a central is not usually the greatest idea unless there's like a barrier behind it because it's like okay I, you trash my corroder great uh i still get in because that, all that thing does is trash programs and i don't need programs to get in and now two out of the three subroutines in your ichi are worthless and the third one is trace one. <laughs> oh. so here he goes he's indexing uh i think one two three four five okay he has a, he has a mem chip so he has enough memory right now He's indexing. He's going for R&D. He's indexing my five cards there. Looks like a Thomas Haas, some ice, and an agenda. Oh, and a secretary. So he's going agenda, secretary, Haas, ice, ice. So he doesn't want... He's, he's preventing me from icing up um, faster. So he indexed. Um, he actually didn't destroy the parasite... He didn't have enough tokens. He just uses Corroder. Uh, he takes the agenda. It's 4-2. Runs again. Okay, trashes the secretary. Hmm. I will not advance again. Right? I learned my lesson. I did not use my last credit on my Matrix Analyzer. <laughs> Okay. So now he's destroyed. Yeah. Now he's destroyed my. Uh... Yeah. This is. I was confused about how much memory he had. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Oh wait. Why is he? Were we incorrect about that? One, two, three, four. Oh, we were both confused about how much memory he had. Yeah, you can keep it. Yeah, you can keep it. Three, four, five. Right. Good. <laughs> anyway, the parasite's gone. Okay. And he's just taking out those barriers. Yeah, even though he has a corroder now, um, a bastion is still annoying as hell. It was a mandatory upgrades. He let me have it. Oh yes, now I got four clicks. Mm mm mm. Four clicks. Four clicks. So he left, he knows, he indexed. He knows he left me a Thomas Haas uh, on R&D. So he's thinking right now that that card is Thomas Haas. And I honestly forget whether it's Thomas Haas or not. Now see, here's the, here's, there is one thing about this deck, is with the mandatory upgrades, right? You score the mandatory upgrades, usually in a fast advance deck. That's like, you win, because you have three ABTs. Right, three beta tests and three Vitruviuses. So you're gonna draw one and then immediately score it because you have mandatory upgrades already, and that's game. Uh, but in this deck, <laughs> it's three mandatory upgrades, three Aries, three Vitruvius. Why Vitruvius? Because over advancing Vitruvius is awesome, right? You want to over advance in the slow advance deck. Oh, he's running R and D with his. Oh, he trashed my Junebug with his two R and D interfaces. And I keep advancing with the matrix analyzers. He runs R&D again. 
he lets it stay. Advance twice with Simone. Maybe it is Thomas Haas. I do need money. Advance. It's another Project Aries. It wasn't Thomas Haas. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Trash two programs. Trash. Well, trash two cards of your choice. See, the indexing, you know, I guess he decided he wasn't going to run the remotes. Um, but yeah, I give him another bad pub, which I don't want to do. Well, I Technically, the corp has the bad pub. But I've got six points now. He's got four. I've got a mandatory upgrades. Uh, I've installed a new card in the remote. <laughs> and he had to get rid of cards. So he got rid of his mem chip. And Katie Jones. He's keeping his rig and he's keeping his pro contacts. Yeah, if that's a Vitruvius. Uh, okay, so he ran the remote. I just let him access everything. I'm not even resing Ash. Right? He's just accessing. I didn't have enough to res Ash. So he trashes Thomas Haas. Because he, I guess he realizes that with Simone, I can money up with that. And it's the cheaper thing to trash in the server. Uh, and then he'll run R&D to make sure I don't have any agendas here. Okay. So I guess now what I should do is I should draw a whole bunch, right? Uh, I should draw to maybe get some money or draw to get the winning agenda. Because if I can just get a Vitruvius, which there are three in the deck still, into my hand, with my mandatory upgrades, I can win. But he controls R&D right now. And... He's got a Yog and a Mimic, <laughs> uh, so it's really easy for him to get in to R&D interfaces. He's only got four points, so if he takes one agenda, that's not the end of the world. If he takes two, it is the end of the world. <laughs> I'm lucky he hasn't really taken that many yet. I have four clicks, so for my turn, I'm going to take four credits. Uh, I guess I figured I'd take the credits first, right? Um, that way if I can... That way if I draw the Vitruvius, I have enough to, uh, to score it. I mean, Samoan helps. Um, uh, you trash my melange. Yep, he's just got control of R&D now. Uh, there's another mandatory upgrade, so we're both one away. Um, and Vitruvius is uh, is in play still for both of us. Oh, table's shaking. Oh my god, there's too many agenda points scored. If 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve out of twenty points have hit the table. There's eight left in the deck. One Aries, two Vitru three Vitruvius. Who will get them? Gonna ice up R and D. Gonna keep him out. Maybe I can draw something then. So it wouldn't be R and D locked right now, but he was he trashed the secretary, he trashed Thomas Haas, he trashed pretty much every you know card that I had that was advanceable. It's an Ichi 1.0. I gotta put something there nasty that'll really bother him and make it harder for him to run R and D frequently. That's the biggest ice I got. Yeah. On its own, it was enough to scare him away from archives. <laughs> or at least really annoy him on archives. Yeah, he's using Mimic plus Data Suckers plus Bad Pub. He's running in too easily. Oh, he's letting the trace happen, I think, on the Ichi, uh, which is why I have to consider to boost it or not. <laughs> he's Kate, he has a link, so if I don't boost the trace... He doesn't have to spend the credit on that third subroutine. And that's game. Vitruvius. No. No. It happens. It happens with slow advance. You really... You, know, you got to defend R&D somehow. If I had advanced that project to Ares early in the game one more time, then uh, that would have really done the trick. Um, or maybe if I had done the power draw... And then taking those credits. I don't know. It was very close. Very good game. Uh, you can definitely see the potential of the slow advances there. But uh, you know, nothing can stop a two R&D interface R&D lock and if you don't have snares. And even that's not going to stop it. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy these HB slow advance. Uh, whether it wins or not, this deck is crazy fun to play, right? There's, you could not understand the amount of enjoyment that you will get when, you know, you just keep advancing something, the runner's going crazy, not knowing what it is. If they run it, they just lose. It was a June bug. They don't run it, boom! Project Ares, trash all your stuff, right? Just make sure your Project Ares is big enough uh, to actually... If you're gonna tra if you're gonna score Project Ares to trash their stuff, make sure it's big enough to win the game. Right? I have at least once or twice scored Project Ares uh, that were big enough to trash pretty much the runner's entire rig. It is glorious. Uh, I suggest you try it.